welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today uh, we are discussing regarding the intravenous cannulation. So first of all, I will be giving you the outline of this class. So that means what are all the things we will be going to discuss in this class. So first one is uh, definition of intravenous cannulation. Second one is what are all the most common indications of intravenous cannulation. Then third one is what are all the most uh, common sites of intravenous cannulation. Then fourth one is how to select a good vein. Then fifth one is what are all the equipments needed for intravenous cannulation. Then, then uh, sixth one is so uh, regarding the cannula introduction flow rates uh, regarding the cannula. Then how to do the procedure. Then followed by the complications and contraindications. These are all the things we will be discussing in this class. So first thing is what is the definition of intravenous cannulation. So that means intravenous cannulation is we are in introducing or inserting a catheter into the vein. So it's an invasive procedure. So whenever we are performing an invasive procedure, we have to be very cautious. So the main advantage of this intravenous cannulation when we compared with other routes of drug administration like intramuscular and subcutaneous routes because the pain and irritation will be very much less in this case of intravenous cannulation. This is the definition of intravenous cannulation. Then, what are the indications of this intravenous cannulation? So, for the administration of fluids, then for collecting blood samples, for giving parenteral nutrition, for chemotherapy treatment, these are all the some of the common indications for intravenous cannulation. Then, um, we, we are going to discuss regarding the what are the most common sites of intravenous cannulation? So, first of all, uh, when we start with the hand, that is, uh, first it is dorsal venous arch of the hand. So, this dorsal venous arch, it is, which is formed by the dorsal metacarpal veins here. Then, after uh, this uh, forearm, then we will come to the wrist, the volar aspect of the wrist. Then, cephalic and basilic veins, followed by the cubital fossa, that is, median anticubital vein. Now, this is uh, regarding the upper limb. Then uh, when we come to that lower limb, um, so in the foot also we will be seeing that is uh, dorsal venous arch. Then in the great saphenous vein at the knee, uh, these are all the some of the common sites of intravenous cannulation. So um, sites, then um, we will be uh, discussing regarding the um, uh, so uh, how to select a good vein that is uh, next another important thing. So in order to select a good vein, the good vein has to be, it has to be very large and it has to be palpable and uh, it has to be bouncy. Then these are all the some of the characteristics of uh, good vein. So the main aim of this intravenous therapy or intravenous cannulation is in order to manage and treat the patient without any complications that is our uh, main aim so in the case of uh, critically ill patients uh, like uh, in the patients with cardiac arrest and all so the maximum time for searching a iv cannula is 90 seconds so if that uh, limit will be exceeded then uh, in the patients uh, who are in cardiac arrest and all we have to go for intraosseous route so this is regarding how to select a good win then uh, what are all the equipments uh, needed for cannulation that is important thing so in order to set up a cannula we need to have all the sizes of uh, various sizes of cannula starting from 14 to 26 case then we need to have an uh, um, tourniquet so that tourniquet it also be preferably non latex some people they will be having latex energy so we can use non latex tourniquet and uh, some cotton alcohol swab then sharp container uh, should be needed and uh, for uh, some transport plaster, cotton, these are all these uh, things needed for uh, intravenous cannulation. Then, then I will be discussed regarding the cannulas. So first one here uh, I have collected some cannulas. So the cannulas uh, they started from uh, 14 gauge, 14 to 26 gauge. So 14 gauge is uh, usually orange, then six, uh, 16 is grey. Then 18 green, then 20 um, pink, then 22 blue, uh, then 24 yellow, 26 purple. These are all the uh, 
color codes of the canvas. So uh, while discussing regarding this canvas, here the gauge is inversely proportional to the flow rate. That means if the gauge is increases, the flow rate will be decreases. That thing we have to keep in our mind. So then I will be discussing regarding the parts of the cannula. So the thing is, uh, this is a uh, IV cannula. So this is a lower lock plug. Then this is the needle grip. This is the flashback chamber. Then this is injection port. These are all the wings. So if you remove this, this is catheter. This is needle. So these are all the parts of uh, intravenous cannula. So so based on the uh, companies uh, that is manufacturer it will be giving the flow rate so for suppose uh, this 20 gauge cannula they have given a flow rate of uh, 61 ml per minute so the flow rate can be determined uh, we can see the flow rate here inside uh, for every, each and every cannula some companies they will be prescribing based on that things so this is regarding the cannula and all then we have to go for the procedure so uh, whenever uh, we are doing procedures uh, as usual we have to uh, wear personal protective equipment that means we have to wear gloves and all then we have to explain the procedure to the patient and we have to take verbal consent from the patient that means um, you know uh, by by explaining the possible risks and outcomes of this procedure we have to explain the uh, procedure that means what we will be going to do with that patient that we have to explain then after taking uh, consent from the patient then we have to arrange all the things needed for IV cannulation that means uh, already we discussed what are all the equipments needed that things we need to be uh, taken care then so then we have to uh, approach the patient after washing uh, we will see the procedure of intravenous cannulation so for this intravenous cannulation First thing what we have to do is we have to take an informed consent from the patient by explaining the possible risks and outcomes of this procedure and then we have to gather all the equipments needed for intravenous cannulation that is uh, one is um, this is tourniquet that is elastic tourniquet and this uh, extension with syringe for flushing then IV dressing then we need some gauze pieces and alcohol swab and cannula these are all the things needed for intravenous cannulation then so we have to clean this uh, cannulation site with an alcohol swab so for suppose if you want to put the cannula here so we have to clean this site from uh, that is in a circular motion from center to periphery we have to clean so in order to avoid bacterial infections then we have to uh, make it dry for 30 to 40 seconds then meanwhile we have to connect tourniquet uh, so for suppose if you want to keep the cannula here so we can tie it just uh, uh, some far distance that is approximal to the site of cannulation we can connect then then we have to gently palpate this area so in order to dilate that means we have to gently palpate this area then we have to select a good vein so it has to be uh, straight and it has to be bouncy and it uh, it is easily palpable so i am choosing this vein for intravenous cannulation then after choosing this intravenous cannulation we have to open the cannula then we have to open the cannula like this so we have to make sure that this wings has to be flat then we have to uh, remove this thing then so we have to make sure that after opening this cannula our finger should not touch this catheter so this is prone for uh, bacterial contamination and all so make sure that we should not touch this catheter and all then we have to perform the procedure so so we have to insert with certain uh, by applying certain traction that is by just extending so we can insert IV cannula at an angle of 10 to 30 degrees centigrade we have to go into the vein so like this we have to go once once we are in vein if the blood enters into the flashback chamber here we have seen it right so once the blood enters into the flash batch chamber slowly we have to withdraw this needle then gently we have to push the catheter into the vein then the thing is we have to uh, we have to apply some pressure here so that in order to prevent the spillage 
then we have to slowly you have to withdraw the needle and keep it in a sharp bin the sharp bin is essential uh, so we have to keep uh, discard these things in a sharp bin then we have to connect this iv extinction with syringe to this cannula then so because of this thing we can check the patency of this cannula if you aspirate it the blood will come then we have to push so in order to check the patency of this uh, iv cannula we have to push this thing so so with this we can confirm any swelling anything is there the patient is complaining of any pain and all that can be uh, visualized by this thing so once uh, it was fixed then we have to anchor this iv cannula with a tagadan plaster anchor the cannula for this uh, we have to take tagadan this is iv tagadan so we have to uh, properly seal it with this like this then we have to open this things we have to keep like this so for uh, better fixation we can put here some transport plaster also so this is the procedure of intravenous cannulation. See the complications of intravenous cannulation. So the extravasation, phlebitis, swelling, hematoma, formation of emboli. Along with that, the most important complication is uh, needle stick injuries. So these are all the some of the complications of intravenous cannulation. Then we will go for the contraindications of intravenous cannulation. So for intravenous cannulation, there is no any absolute contraindications. Some relative contraindications are there. So that first one is burns. So the site of burns, we can avoid the uh, site at which the burns. Then in the patients with the thin and the fragile veins and sclerosed veins, then the patients will be having arteriovenous fistula. In these patients, this uh, intravenous cannulation is contraindicated. So this is regarding the intravenous cannulation or intravenous therapy procedure. Thank you.